and we will yeah. uh, see if we can get that resolved. All right. I am so sorry, but I can go ahead and speak to this regardless. I have a few graphs, but it's not anything that we can't speak to. All right. So um, I, my, my title is Incorporating and Reflecting on Generative AI in a Writing Intensive Seminar. And this was, was initiated due to my interest in generative AI. And uh, I have a background in computer science. Um, as well as cognitive psychology. And I teach a 400 level cognitive psychology seminar course. Um, and I've been lucky because this course is a fairly small course. I have about 17 students in it. And uh, I have time to get to know the students, which is really helpful. This seminar culminates in a final paper and a final presentation on a topic related to cognitive psychology. Um, the students in the course submit a final paper. So this is done through iterative writing. Um, sorry. And um, they have assignments that they do throughout the semester. So I get a chance to see what they're writing as they go through. Um, obviously, there's a lot of, there's sort of a continuum about what people think about chat GPT and AI. There are some people I speak to who absolutely don't want to use it. They, If they see students who are using it, they consider cheating it, cheating academic integrity, problems on that. And I have other colleagues and people that I see throughout many of these uh, conversations who want to incorporate it and use it fully. I was interested to see where on the continuum we felt comfortable in our course. Um, I don't want to be completely dismissive of it. I want to let students use it, but I also want to put up some safeguards and make sure that students are using it in a responsible manner. So I felt it was important to educate students about chat GPT, to allow them to use it, but to try to encourage them not to use it fully for their paper. I didn't want them writing their entire paper in chat GPT. I wanted them to understand the pros and cons of using this technology and, and recognizing that where it is now is not where it's going to be five years from now, or even a year from now, or even a month from now. So recognizing that this is a changing landscape they're gonna be using. So in this course, as they wrote the paper, they were thought they were asked to consider using ChatGPT Chat and AI, how they used it. And um, I also wanted them to have, to, to use a, to provide a metacognitive response to their writing. So at the end of the semester, they were given a Google form that they were to fill out uh, that related to many aspects of the writing process. In addition to ChatGPT, AI, you know, many aspects of how they came up with their ideas, how they work through the process of writing. And I want them to really focus on that, not just the product itself. So I had a few assignments. The first day we did an overview of ChatGPT, AI. We had an in-class activity. And this was actually an activity that I generated using ChatGPT AI. And I shared that with the students that I had done this. Um, I gave it a simple prompt, something to the effect of, you know, design uh, uh, something I can do for a first day activity to teach college level students how to use ChatGPT AI, ChatGPT. And it gave me a brief, uh, about a one and a half page outline of something I could do. I developed it is an in-class activity. We usually do group activities at the end. And I worked through it with students so that they were able to try out ChatGPT, talk about it as a small group. I also had introduced it first as well. So they got a little, a little bit of a taste of it. And many of them had, were not at all aware of it. I was interested to find out that many of my students hadn't known about it, didn't think about it, weren't aware of it. Throughout the semester, as I mentioned, we had iterative writing assignments on selected topics. Um, and again, they pick from cognitive psychology. And then I have weekly session leader sessions so that two students in this case each week led a discussion on something related to chat GP, to cognitive psychology. Um, the final discussion was actually on chat GPT. I had two articles um, that I can make available that have to do with the state of chat GPT and AI and other technology at that time. One was sort of a an existential, where are we going in terms of humanity paper? And the other was more the pro, the guidelines and pros and cons of using programs like this to aid in writing and how does it help and what are the problems? And the leaders led the session and it was really a wonderful session. And I'll talk a little more about that in a moment. 
And then at the end, we had a final paper and a final presentation. So all students took these iterative feedback from their iterative assignments, built their final paper and provided a final presentation. And like I said, with that came a writing about the writing process metacognitive ad assessment in which students were prompted to reflect on any use of AI tools, both benefits and pitfalls. Um, so I have an example here on my slide of what the activity looks like. And again, I, I can share my slides later. I can put that in the chat or something. I'm not gonna try to do this while I'm talking because I'm not that good at multitasking. Um, but basically this was the outline of the, the um, uh, activity that we did. And I have the two articles if you want to look them up. The first one's called Chat GPT for Good on Opportunities and Challenges of Large Language Models for Education. And again, this is a paper that talks about pros and cons, um, how to use Chat GPT and how to use it effectively. And the other is AI is an existential threat, just not the way you think. And um, I can put those also the links to those in the chat if anyone's interested. And that was more of a, how does AI affect us as humans? And the two students who led the discussion did a great job and students had a really wonderful discussion on all of that. Finally, I have an example up here. And again, I'll try to figure out a way to get this in the chat. Um, writing about the writing process. This was an assignment that I put up. Um, I put it into Blackboard. We use Blackboard at UMBC. Um, early in the semester so that they could see a full PDF of what I would be asking them so they could sort of plan ahead as to what they would be asked. Um, in, this, in this assignment, they were asked to talk about how they came up with their research topic, how they researched their ideas, how they put together their literature review, and what considering next steps to tie it all together, but then to also specifically focus on whether they used any kind of tools such as ChatGPT or even things like they incorporate things like Google Doc, uh, sorry, Google searches and Grammarly, Bard, anything else like that that they might have used. And I asked them to rate their own writing. I asked them to think about how their final paper sounded, what they thought about it. And there were really two questions that relate to this particular topic here. One is, did you use AI, for example, chat GPT or Bard or another project product to help with ideas for this assignment? And if so, which ones? And did they help? And then the second question was, did you use AI to help with writing this assignment? So one was to coming up with ideas and the second one was about writing. Um, as I noted, when we did these student-led discussions, we got some really wonderful uh, conversations. The students really thought about the ethics behind using ChatGPT uh, from reading the articles and from discussions amongst themselves. They recognize that there's a lot of bias, which I think many of us are aware of, um, but they really start to, to deeply think about what that meant in terms of their own papers, what they were getting in terms of the information, the fact that what they were seeing was not really necessarily a full spectrum. So if they were going to be relying on things from chat GPT, there was going to be bias in many ways that there were hallucinations, things that obviously are not real. There's a lot of fake stuff out there. Um, they looked at um, access, who has access, who doesn't have access, you know, is are the yes, everyone may have access to the lower level versions of these, but who really has the best access? What are we getting from these? But on the other hand, they also talked about positive uses. So I wanted to make sure that this is not just bashing AI. And again, we're going to be having to live with this. We can't turn our, we can't, you know, cover our heads and say this isn't happening. So well, how can you use it? I have students who are currently using it in their jobs to write emails, to come up with ideas, to um, come up with, for teachers, to come up with some plans and lessons. And I know people use it for grading, uh, but the, the kind of the major story was to use it wisely. And like we say with reading anything that we see on the internet, we need to be knowledgeable consumers. And so I, I feel they felt that as students, they need to learn about how to use this effectively. What are the ethical ways of using it? How can they use it so that they are getting the most out of it, but not doing something that negates the benefit of learning to write because I, I truly think they did want to learn to write and bring their ideas across. Um, so they found, I think most of them found that brainstorming, generating ideas for topics, things like that, phrasing, those types of things, they found it very helpful. 
Um, I have a screen here that you can't see, sorry, um, that talks about the products they use. So they use Google and Grammarly, Quillbot AI, ChatGPT, and the majority of them did use something. Um, six of out of the 17 didn't use anything. But when I looked at the actual numbers, again, the majority used it for brainstorming, um, for exploring and pinpointing topics to help with outlining uh, their entire paper. Um, they used it to help them focus, to help with grammar, paraphrase, paraphrase and rephrase. Um, so I think they found it useful. They, what, um, what they told me in general was that they liked using it, that it helped them for the most part, it was useful, but they didn't want to rely on it. I will say in reading the papers as I went through the semester, of course, I certainly can be fooled and maybe I try to be too optimistic. And uh, But my feeling was is that these students did write their own papers for this particular class. They may have used it to help them come up with the ideas and to help them um, massage the ideas. And maybe some students, especially those who are not native speakers, were able to use things to help them with their grammar, but that they were able to sort of find that that balance point where they weren't relying on it for the entire paper. We did do in class, like I said, iterative writing, we did peer reviews. And so there were lots of opportunities in class to see what they were doing, to see what they were writing. So I got to know their writing styles, which was very helpful. So this was a nice, very, very nice small group that I could really interact with and get to know. So I talk a little bit about what are the next steps. Um, and, you know, one of the things I think and I, I'm, I'm hearing from various people is that a lot of institutions don't necessarily have rules to go by, which I understand. You know, we don't everything's evolving and changing. Um, we don't really necessarily know what the where this is going. So one of the things I've been working on is creating a website uh, for my institution, for my department with resources, with papers that we're reading. Uh, with links to other webinars, things that are going on, so that my faculty, the faculty in my psychology department at UMBC, as well as my faculty at Shady Grove, um, can learn about what's out there, make their own best judgments about some resources. Um, from what I'm reading, I will certainly provide recommendations and my thoughts, but ultimately I think these are things that many faculty will have to come up with in terms of their own comfort level. I think, as I'd heard someone saying earlier, how can we, if we're going to be teachers using ChatGPT, can we ask our students not to use it? Um, if we are afraid of it, that may that fear may go to our students. Our students may end up being fearful of it. And I do think it's something that's going to be in the workplace. It's not going to be avoided. We, uh, we're going to have to understand what it is and learn to work with it. And that was something I think the students came up with is that they needed to learn not only what it is, but how they best can interact with it in various types of jobs. So we didn't get too much into that in our class, but that was something I think they're going to take off with. And depending on where they end up, what where they land, what they do, they'll come up with their own ideas about how they interact with ChatGPT. But my hope is that they will be intelligent users, they will be informed users, they will be cautious in terms of being aware of the pitfalls, but that they also can embrace some of the benefits of using ChatGPT um, and other forms of, of AI. Um, and basically, I think that's the last screen I have up here. Like oh, I said, I'm happy to put that in the notes. I think we're at, I have a timer up here that's telling me I'm just about at time. Is that correct? That is correct. And we do have oh. a question in the chat. Um, oh, great. Do you have specific strategies for supporting second language learners in their grammar slash writing as they use AI? Wow. Good question. I um, I don't have, I have second language learners. And what was interesting is I did have several students in my class who at, we're now at the 400 level and they become much more proficient. But they spoke to this problem, and I, I don't necessarily have my own recommendations because it's not something I teach, but they did talk about how difficult it was and how hard it is sometimes when they write a paper. And sometimes I think these second language learners, I don't want to say they're the ones most prone to cheat because that's not a fair generalization at all. But I think some of them said that they felt pressure 
And when it came to writing, sometimes it was hard to write that really good paper. And what they felt is that if they could use a tool like ChatGPT to sort of help edit the paper, that they could put those ideas out there. They could say things in as well as they could. Um, and then they could use the feedback from chat GPTIs to sort of polish the papers. Um, so that was one of the ways they used it. I am not an expert on, on second language learners, so I don't want to go beyond that. But that, I think, is a very good use. And that's what they were telling me as students. I hope that helps. Wonderful. Thank you. Another question in the chat. How did or did your students consider the issues of bias? that you mentioned, especially in the writing stages of brainstorming and organizing? Great question. So, you know, we did speak a lot early on about problems of bias in terms of the problems that the databases that ChatGPT uses are based on the people who do interact with them. So of course that's limiting. Not everyone has access, not everyone is using it. So it's not getting the breadth, just like we know from statistics and research, there's so many people who don't have access. So we're missing those voices. In addition, we know there's the bias from things where people put in wrong information, misleading information, lots of things like that. And so we talked about how important it is to when you find information, if you were going to go to chat GPT to help write your paper, that you don't just take it at face value. You don't just take what you find there and copy it, that you can use it to generate information, but then you go and you look up your sources. You make sure that these things are direct, you know, that they're obviously there's not a lot of citing, but you go to find those citations. So if there's something you're really interested in, don't just take it, but go and look it up. Use it like you might use the literature review in a paper. This is a great idea. Now, what, what's the real story behind it? So go to your research board or your database to find out what's really happening. We did talk about that. I think that was really helpful. I hope I answered that question. All Wonderful. right. Thank you. And we have uh, two more questions in about a minute or so to sure. answer them. Uh, how much change or lack of change occurred in the writing styles of your students? And how about your own writing style? Mm -hmm. Um. It's hard to say. I mean, some of these students, this was this class was the first time I saw them writing. Um, I do give a lot of feedback and we do I do like an annotated bibliography in the beginning of the semester. Um, so it sort of was hard to see whether there was really change. And, and I didn't map. It would be interesting to see who used it and how it and which I didn't go back and look to see which students used it and how affected their writing. And that would be a great thing to follow up on. Um, my own writing, I, I actually did use uh, this for um, something I've been doing for work for another project at work, and I fed information into there, and I took a look at it. I didn't write the final report, but I, I did find it helpful in helping me categorize qualitative data. So I think that will help me in terms of my time management, in terms of helping my writing. So I think it can be effective. But I do love to write, so um, I don't know how much. Sometimes it's almost more, for me, it seems like more trouble to use ChatGPT to actually do the writing, but maybe as a tool for research in my case. Thank you. And one final question. How can we be ensured that students stay as knowledgeable consumers after many years of using or relying on AI tools? And that's really a great, uh, they're all great questions. Um, This was actually one of the ones I think that's kind of touched on in that sort of uh, existential AI question is that, you know, we're still at the point where we're cognizant of this, we're aware of this. Uh, there is a risk, you know, as we move forward that this becomes more normalized, people rely on it more. Um, I think it's just something we have to keep in our messaging as teachers, we have to remember and, and keep it at the forefront that life I'll put my I'll put my if you can hear me I will put my email in the link I will also uh, put my my PowerPoints they are in Google Drive and I can share that with people I don't think they're currently shareable but I'll put the link in right now and thank you Diane and we are going to go into collect all of the presentations and email them out to everyone who registered as well wonderful um, I do want to thank Diane for this, this presentation. Uh, just a reminder that our next showcase starts at 1240. You can consult your program to determine which room you're going to. If you're not sure uh, which room you're going to attend, 
feel free to head back to the main room and someone will direct you from there.